Hey, good afternoon folks. Welcome back again. Thanks for tuning in. So today we're taking a look at some bees that are underneath a home and uh, it should be easy access. I wanted to do an assessment video and I wanted to show you what I'm going to be dealing with. So check it out. Lots of space. That plant smells really, really good. Okay, folks, hey, welcome back. So uh, I'm here, I got everything set up. Right now I'm sitting in the shade. Uh, getting ready to do this removal. I got the insulation peeled back, the wire mesh peeled back. I'm kind of waiting. Right now it's super hot out here. This side of the house, there's no shade other than what I'm sitting in. So I'm kind of trying to think of where I'm going to put the comb. I don't want to use my BVAC if I can help it. I do have it with me. Again, if I do start using it, it's going to get awfully hot if it's not in the shade. So um, I'm pondering coming back here tomorrow when I have a portable shade canopy set up so that way it's a little easier. I can probably remove um, part of it while I'm here. Uh, a lot of the comb pieces that I'm seeing are empty. So enough rambling, check it out. Hey folks, so you'll see we got the main section here, and I think this used to be where the colony was, but it looks like they swarmed. You'll see the swarm cells. So I'm going to start with this one here. We'll remove this comb back here that's usually empty, and then little by little. I'll work my way up and then we'll use the bee vacuum at the last resort to get the cluster. So stay tuned. So this is what I got. <clears throat> Not bad. Starting here. Got about that much down. Of course it's all a big sticky drippy mess. So, to be continued.
Folks, I decided to call it a day. The other reason why I wanted to stop is because it's awfully dark in here now and I didn't bring a light with me. So I'm gonna come back tomorrow morning. I'll have the portable shade canopy. I'll have a light that I'll bring with me that I can hang up underneath here and I can take my time. Haven't found the queen yet. I do got four frames of brood comb. This uh, Rubbermaid tote is pretty much all full of honeycomb. The bees will rob that out and clean it out. But I'm just going to leave my stuff in here and then I'll come back tomorrow morning. Again, we got a lot of, a lot of bees all over the tarp. What I'll do is when I start tomorrow, I'll move everything out and then instead of using a tarp, I'll lay down a large sheet of cardboard. So that way it'll make it easier for the bees to crawl. This is how we'll leave them for now and uh, we'll see how it goes. I got the uh, shade canopy set up. I'm using the plywood here just to slide in and out. And I found that I can sit on my little toolbox there instead of being in on my knees. So that's super handy. All right, folks, so I got this uh, joist finally cleared out. Boy, there's a lot of, a lot of comb, I tell you. And you can see the different patterns. Bad comb running that way. Bad comb running that way. But no queen. Um, they did have a bunch of queen cells, so they were in the process of making a queen. So to make this easy, I'm going to get a small cardboard box, and I'm just going to scoop these bees. I'm going to dump them into this box. In this box here, we have the framed uh, brood comb. Uh, there's some pollen nectar in there. There's some queen cells that are still intact with royal jelly on the inside. And when I have enough of these bees scooped away, I'm going to fire up my bee vac and uh, we'll, we'll vacuum up all these bees as best possible. So long ass job. I'm about halfway through it. Okay folks, welcome back. Uh, we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. You see I got the comb removed. It's basically drone comb empty but now we got to the mass of bees here still haven't found the queen yet but we're looking for her. if uh, you guys happen to see the queen when you're watching this video post this timestamp in the comments and I'll send you a coupon for a free ice cream So now I'm going to fire up my bee vac and we're going to try to suck these bees out and finish it up. Okay folks, and we're down to the nitty gritty. Took off the last piece of comb. We got all kinds of brood comb. And we got this left. So now I'm going to vacuum up the bees. And uh, hopefully we'll call it a day. If you spot the queen, post it in the timestamp. Hey folks, welcome back again. So just to summarize here a little bit, day one was my pre-assessment. Uh, I just went to take a look at what I was dealing with. Day two, I got the insulation pulled down, most of the wire mesh that was there removed out, okay? And I got some of the honeycomb pieces removed on day two. Day three, I got the majority of all of the comb removed. I used my bee vac at the very last part of it to suck up all the bees. Unfortunately, I never laid my eyes on the queen at all. So this is now day four. This is the bee vac bottom. That's where I attach the vacuum hose to. So as I suck up the bees, they go into that hole. Now what you're not seeing on this setup is the top. I have a top that sits onto this, it's all sealed. It has another one of those fittings so the suction comes from the top so that way there's all this 
area in here the bees don't get killed you know from too much suction but they will get into the box inside of here I basically have just some empty frames with foundation um, some older frames with drawn out comb and the bees are just going to hang out and this is the screen so the part the front part of the screen can be slid out inside of this box I have 10 frames of the cutout comb but in the frames I only save the comb that had nectar pollen uh, eggs larva cap brood for baby bees and we got about 10 of those frames so all I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this box up I'm going to put it on top of this board here and then slowly I'm going to pull the screen out maybe maybe two or three inches so this way the bees can hopefully migrate out of that box and then up and cover the brood frames here and then again all I explained is I'm gonna take this box down here lift it up put it on top of this one and then I'll slide the screen out these here it's basically just a little shim but it's got a nice screen instead of using an inner cover this is a screened inner cover just to get a little more airflow I only pulled the screen out maybe that far so this will let the bees from inside kind of move up using the shade canopy really helped uh, keeping that bee vacuum in the shade helps keep it cooler and I did stop when I was cutting out most of the comb I turned the vacuum off I took the top off and I just let it ventilate. Again, the screen prevented the bees from flying out. A few moments later. Uh, you did see, after about an hour, I had the screen pulled out three inches. I pulled it out further, and I removed the top cover. I have not opened the front gate yet. I have this top opened. I want the bees to move from the bottom box up. There's nothing in this bottom box that's useful to them. It's all empty, you know, empty frames, you know, old comb, nothing in it. All their resources are in the top box. With me opening the top, I'm gonna leave it like this for maybe another 15, 20 minutes. I have a little portable stand that I can use. I'll set it right here. I'll put a bottom board, a screen bottom board on top. And then all I'll do is I'll move this top box and set it on the bottom board. Again, this is the bottom of the BVAC. It has been emptied. Uh, to be honest, there's very few, if any, dead bees with this type of a setup. You'll see it's got the, the incline, so as the vacuum bees come in here, there's an incline. They naturally run up the ramp. When they get to the back portion, they, the frames are very close. So they go up into the frames, and that way they can hang out. And, and the suction really doesn't you know, make their guts explode. A smaller cavity, a smaller container you have that risk of killing bees quicker. Using standard Langstroth size boxes helps a lot. You'll see I'm using a nice foam window seal. This is like a window insulation you would put. So that kind of helps with the airtight. I have it stapled. And I do have to replace these buckles, but you can get some cheap buckles. I put some on this piece and then on the box. This box, was the box that was on top. Unfortunately, as I was disassembling the vac, I did not put my eyes on the queen. I did see lots of queen cells that had larva in it. So I left those cells intact as best I could when I put them in the frames. So I will assume that they'll, they'll go ahead and they'll, they'll tend to the brood. There's a lot of bees on the inside. You'll see this little ramp. I'm basically using an empty Langstroth box a piece of cardboard that's kind of bent at an angle and it's weighted on one side when you bend it I just kind of put it underneath so as I pulled the frames out of the vacuum box I checked the frames for the queen if there was no queen on that frame I would shake the bees off onto this cardboard so that way when the bees fell on the cardboard I could kind of see if there was a queen running around and again bees for some reason bees naturally like to run uphill so if you can create an incline they'll go right up and I got them you know acclimating to the box so it's fixing the rain uh, this was pretty much an all-day process I took my time with it uh, I know this might be a little bit too much content but I hope that was enough detail it's the bush kill style bivac 
Uh, as far as plans and putting it together, please go check out Jeff Horchuff, um, Mr. Ed. Uh, he's an excellent beekeeper. Uh, he built his bee vac. His video inspired me. Stay tuned for more, and I'll try my best to bring you along for the progress.